So this asteroid behind me, or I guess technically a cometary object, is what's known as 3200 Phaethon, or maybe Phaethon. I'm sure someone in the comments is going to correct me, as always. Anyway, this is an extremely unusual object, and is actually an object that's kind of difficult to define. A few really unusual features were discovered about it, including the fact that, first of all, it seems to be blue in color, compared to typical gray or red of a lot of other asteroids. And more importantly, it was one of the few asteroids exhibiting cometary features. Back then, it was referred to as a rock comet. But since then, we've actually discovered quite a lot of new things about it, and more importantly, very recently, the scientists have discovered something else that's extremely rare in the solar system. This particular asteroid seems to be actually accelerating its spin, and is thus spinning faster and faster every single year. And so, once again, let's talk about this unusual, somewhat difficult to describe and to define rock, focusing on some of the most recent discoveries. Now, first of all, this object is the first to have ever been discovered by direct imaging from a spacecraft. It was found in October of 83 using the NASA's infrared astronomical satellite, IRAS. And because of its relatively high velocity across the night skies, the scientists pretty quickly realized that it's what's known as the Apollo asteroid. A type of a near-Earth asteroid that will generally cross the Earth's orbital field, going a little bit farther than the Earth's orbit at the farthest point, but then going much closer to the Sun at their nearest point. In other words, their orbits will always cross planet Earth's orbit. But in this case, this is a much more extreme orbit, with this particular asteroid reaching the Sun extremely close. As a matter of fact, it crosses the orbits of Venus and Mercury as well. And before you ask, no, it's not really dangerous to us yet. As a matter of fact, in this case, this particular asteroid's orbit has been measured very accurately for the past 30 plus years. And so, because of its well-determined orbit, the scientists are certain that it's not going to collide with Earth or any other object for the next few hundreds of years. But this is still a near-Earth asteroid, and it's also a relatively large one. It's approximately 5.4 kilometers across. It's actually one of the largest asteroids out there, orbiting in such a way that at some point it might cross planet Earth. But because it crosses planet Earth, there is something else really exciting about this asteroid, combined with the fact that it's also a comet. Now, you might be already aware, but we have what's known as meteor showers once in a while. And you might also be aware that these meteor showers are generally produced by various comets that crossed planet Earth's past sometime in the past. There are a few dozen of these already known to us, and while well, most of them are essentially these leftovers from comets that used to orbit here a long time ago, leaving behind all of these particles that once in a while cross the orbital path of various planets, and on planet Earth, this will always result in the very predictable meteor showers around the same time every year. For example, the comet Halley that passed here a long time ago created what's known as Orionids, that often occur in late October. Or basically right now when I'm making this video. So right now we have Orionids in the night skies. But in mid-December we'll get something else. You can see that the orbit here is much tighter. This is what's known as Geminids. And it just turns out that Geminids were discovered to be caused by Phaethon. Furthermore, it's the only known meteor shower that seems to be caused by an active asteroid. Once again, making this a very unusual rock, a rock that possesses cometary features. But, as you can see from the orbit of Geminids, once again, it does approach the Sun extremely close. The distance here is about 0.14 astronomical units, or roughly around 13 million miles, 20 million kilometers. And naturally, this is exactly where the asteroid passes as well. At this distance, the temperatures on the surface get extremely hot. We can try to simulate this in Space Engine, but it looks like the temperature goes from about minus 100 degrees Celsius at the farthest distance, to ridiculously hot temperatures of over 700 degrees Celsius or 1400 degrees Fahrenheit when it approaches the Sun at its closest. And that's exactly what's most likely producing all of these unusual effects we're observing, including the unusual change in color. For example, these intense solar heating effects very likely cause the sublimation of any dark red organic material, but also a lot of iron and a lot of pyroxene on the surface, leaving behind dry silicates, different types of clay minerals, organic polymers, magnetite, sulfides, and some of the other materials that don't evaporate right away, creating that typical blue color only observed in what's known as B-type asteroids. These are some of the rarest asteroids out there. But because of its cometary activity, it also possesses quite a lot of rugged surface, quite a lot of steep slopes, and lots of different large pebbles, with the actual surface very likely constantly changing. It's even been suggested that the surface here might resemble some kind of a dry lake on Earth, because of the extreme heat from the Sun, with this potentially explaining why sometimes the asteroid appears extremely bright. 
you can actually see some of these brightening effects in some of these images. But these extreme effects from the sun obviously generate a lot of other effects as well. They don't just create the cometary tail and produce the meteor showers here on planet Earth, they're also responsible for unusual effects we sometimes refer to as the Yarkovsky effects or also Europe effects. Effects produced when the sun heats up one of the objects on one side, with the heat then creating a bit of a propulsion causing the asteroid to change its orbit a little bit. But in this case these effects don't just change orbits, they can also cause the rotation of the asteroid to start changing as well, as different regions of the asteroid get heat up differently and thus start acting like tiny rocket engines, increasing or decreasing the orbital spin. These effects are generally relatively difficult to measure, even if we know the surface of the asteroid really well, so this is actually that one part that always adds a bit of a chaos when it comes to accurately predicting orbits of asteroids on various comets. But because this object approaches the Sun so close, the effects here are going to be even more dramatic. And this is exactly what the scientists have recently detected. It looks like the rotation of the asteroid has been accelerating every year. When using some of the older data from Arecibo Observatory and trying to figure out the size, the shape and the rotation of Phaethon for one of the upcoming Japanese missions known as Destiny Plus, that's going to be doing a flyby of this object in the next five years, the scientists discovered that a single rotation here is decreasing by 4 milliseconds every year with this asteroid thus accelerating its rotation. This was actually discovered completely by accident when the scientists were trying to match some of the predicted light curves to what all of this is going to look like in 4 years and realizing that things were not matching. They would only match if you would adjust the rotation of the asteroid, decreasing it by 4 milliseconds every single year, with that fitting the pattern extremely well, which now officially makes this asteroid the largest ever discovered of 11 known objects to change its rate of spin. Now a single rotation here is still pretty long, 3.6 hours, and so a change of 4 milliseconds is really not that much, but it's still quite significant when it comes to long periods of time. For example, we know that by increasing the rotation speed, some asteroids eventually fall apart and create binary objects, which in theory could happen here as well. But because of the combination of all of these observations about its color, its unusual rotation, its strange orbit and the fact that it produces meteor showers, when you consider all of them all at once, it really makes this unusual asteroid the strangest we've ever discovered. And that's exactly why a Japanese space agency wants to send a mission here. Destiny Plus stands for Demonstration and Experiment of Space Technology for Interplanetary Voyage with Faith on Flyby and Dust Science. Probably one of the more exciting upcoming asteroid missions that's going to be teaching us a little bit more about these strange objects, revealing a lot of these solutions to all of these mysteries. Now this is not the only active asteroid known to us that produces unusual cometary emissions, for example this one right here also does so once in a while, and it's also not the only asteroid with unusual orbits, this one seems to actually have very similar orbit, but it is the only asteroid known to us that has all of those features all at once, naturally making this a very exciting mission that we're going to be talking about I guess in about 2 years from now. But until then, or until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.